Hi everyone, um, this is Dr. Mead again. Welcome to part four of the Cure Your Mind online course. Hoping that um, you're feeling better and better every day as we go along. Um, today's chapter is probably one of my favorites and is really treating the root cause of a lot of people's emotional issues. And that system that we're going to talk about is the adrenal system. We'll also mention the thyroid gland uh, in today's lecture. However, the main focus is really the pillar of your resilience, your emotional resilience, and your ability to withstand stress. So let's, uh, let's start right away and discuss where the adrenal system is. Um, your adrenal glands sit above your kidneys. They're right here. You can see the arrow pointing there. And they get signals from your brain, direct signals. So your adrenal glands produce um, adrenaline and noradrenaline and a lot of other hormones. And they're responsible for your fight or flight response. So if you're being attacked by a lion or you feel threatened, you suddenly get this urge to either fight or run away. That's known as fight or flight. Now, it's a normal response to have in the body because it protects us, obviously, by either running away or fighting back. However, in today's world, the, we are actually continuously stimulated by stressful signals. So the adrenal glands never have a chance to switch off. For example, um, you might have phone calls every hour or every half an hour. You might have financial deadlines. You might have marital problems. Um, just overwork, late nights, family issues. All these are signals to the adrenal system via your brain. They're signaling your adrenal system to be ready, to prepare, to fight or flee or to deal with some difficult situation. And you can imagine what that does. It, over time, it exhausts your adrenal system. And that's why most people today are completely exhausted. They have adrenal fatigue. And adrenal fatigue is probably the root cause of a lot of immune problems, um, blood pressure problems, as well as emotional problems such as anxiety and depression. Now, let's go slowly through this picture here. Um, so we have emotional experiences in life and they go and affect the brain. Now, after a trauma or after an experience, your perception of reality of yourself, of people around you changes. You'll judge people differently, you'll be more careful, you might be, you feel bad about yourself, low self-esteem, a lot of things happen. When you have an altered view of yourself, of the world, after an experience, there's actually physical changes that happen in your brain as well. Uh, there's a rewiring of nerves, and that we call, the ability to rewire nerves, we call neuroplasticity. And when this rewiring happens, you're also going to have behavioral changes, right? So I'm not saying that the rewiring causes the behavioral changes, the trauma and life experiences cause behavioral changes and this could cause the physical changes in the brain or they, ha they happen simultaneously. When that happens, of course, with the brain changes, you'll get, uh, when the brain nerves change their connections, that means the way they signal the body also changes. Right? And that's why emotional experiences can affect your body physically. The key organs that are affected during stress and trauma, of course, are your adrenal system. So what happens is after an emotional event, your body stores the memory, stores the stress actually as an emotional memory. And that continuously tells the adrenal system to be prepared in case danger happens again, in case uh, a divorce happens in the future, in case there's another financial deadline. You stop feeling safe and empowered. And so there's a continuous signal on your adrenal glands from the brain, mainly what we call the hypothalamus pituitary axis, adrenal axis. So there's a hypothalamus pituitary gland in the brain. And then they stimulate down here the adrenal system. And that's called the HPA axis. Now, if you don't resolve these stressful events in your life, you don't resolve the trauma, you don't do either counseling or homeopathy, 
or some form of um, release technique, then the signals continue to stress your adrenal system and your adrenal glands burn out. And when they burn out, um, so your adrenal glands produce cortisol in a nice rhythmic way during the day. However, most people, when they have adrenal fatigue, this cortisol production becomes imbalanced, right? So the levels of cortisol in your blood are out of balance and that will suppress feel-good neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, GABA, and melatonin, 